What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. So excited coming with you with a brand new video for a brand new season today. I'm really excited about this one, man. Season three is finally here. And after the second to longest season of Fortnite to date, we finally have a new update with the introduction of the new season. That means that your arena points you've achieved last season have now been reset. So today, we're gonna be going over a season three ultimate guide for arena to help you quickly climb the ranks. This guide, guys, oh my goodness. We're gonna cover everything from landing strategies, techniques from the early to late game to ensure you dominate most of your games. The thing is though, the meta shift for this season is huge. There's no more pump shotgun. We have sharks. <laughs> most of the map being water and it could really, really be hectic. So it's about that time, guys. It's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch, but I need some bunch of crunch. Oh, we're gonna get this going, I'm fine. With the new season starting, it's common for there to be meta changes and new strategies for you guys to master. So you need to check out ProGuides.com where there are up-to-date meta changes from things like the best guns available to the newest courses on different techniques that you can use to improve. Be sure to check out the description, guys, below. All right, guys, so jumping right into the new season, whoo, really the format hasn't changed. Let's take a quick look for a recap. Okay, so for solos, placement points are, if you place 25th, you get 60 height points, 15th and 5th, you're getting 30 height points, and 60 height points if you get that sweet victory royale. Each elimination in solos will grant you 20 height. Solos, guys, are the easiest ways to get high points really, really fast. Trios, you're only getting your first take of high points when you get top eight, you receive 60 hype. Top four and two placements are getting 30 hype each. And finally, the win is gonna get you 60 hype. I just wanted to go over the point system quickly because by just explaining it to you, you know, you can just see how much it'll take between the two game modes to gain hype. Now, if we're going to be realistic, it's obvious that solos are going to be the way forward getting you to champion division. So we recommend playing placement and solos to climb the ranks. You're in the same boat as everybody else. <laughs> everyone has to reset to zero and everyone wants to get back to the top. The reason we say to play for placement is because if you can get top 25th in your game, that's the equivalent to three kills. Now, we are not saying three kills isn't achievable, but what we are saying is placement will be a lot more risk-free. Last point that we wanna make on the format is that you don't start paying bus fare until division four. So while you're in division one, two, and three, you wanna be going for the win in every game to maximize your point potential. One thing that has changed in this season is the map. Let's talk about drop spots. Who's ready? Here we go. Okay, so drop spots are arguably the most important decision you make in every game. Choosing a drop spot carefully to ensure it has everything you need is so important. With the map changes, a large portion of the map is covered in water, <laughs> but there are new additions to the water that we wanna hear your opinions on down below. Okay guys, so what are these new changes? All right, mobility has changed in Fortnite with new ways to travel around the map. From whirlpools in the water, <laughs> which boost you into the air and allow you to pull your glider for a good distance, and the sharks that you're able to ride when you fish them. <laughs> Just be careful with these sharks though, guys, all right? They're not exactly happy to see you and they will bite. These new additions to Fortnite you should consider in your decision on where to land. All right, guys, so the reason for picking a drop spot early and sticking to it is good for many, many reasons, all right? First and foremost, all right, you're gonna gain an understanding of the area and the loot it has to offer. And once you know where all the loot and chest spawns are, you know, you can just create an efficient loot route where you can maximize loot potential. Okay, second, the more and more you land at the same place, the better your chances are of being able to successfully win over the area. What we mean by this is that if you know the loot spawns available and if you're contested, then you can just figure out the best way to fight the area based on where you and your opponents land. Finally, okay, the most important aspect of understanding a drop spot area is knowing the loadout you're going to leave with. Now, this does sound silly because the game is based on RNG, I get it. However, if you are consistently, you know, landing in an area with fishing spots, then your chances of having fish is highly likely. Setting a loadout target in mind when choosing a drop spot will help allow you to be consistent, which is what is gonna help you climb the ranks. When choosing your drop spot, you should consider chances of being contested, loot potential, and positioning on the map, you got it? With the new mobility, choosing a drought spot around the edges of the map are a lot more reliable now. Choosing an area around the borders is going to decrease your chances of being contested, which means you avoid any risk of early engagement. When considering the loot potential, fishing spots should be something at the top of your list to look out for, okay? 
not only can you fish weapons out of the water, you can get floppers and slurp fish. Ideal items, obviously, to carry into the mid and late game, so keep that in mind. Speaking of the mid game, all right, that's our next topic, let's go. Now that we have covered the fundamentals of drop spots, let's look at mid game. As we discussed when we spoke earlier about the format of Arena, we said that placement in solos is the best way to get points really fast. Our advice is avoid contested areas. So to do this, you need to take everything in and just remember key bits of information. This could be the amount of players who jump out of the bus at certain points, where the bus is traveling and, you know, what areas seem to have already had players contested. Take a note of how many players get out of the bus when traveling is so important because it always helps you gain information on air traffic and what areas are going to be contested. <laughs> Once you know this, you can work out ways to avoid them as we are playing for placement, right? And we're looking to avoid any unnecessary fights until we secure that placement. This is called no man's land, an area which no one is around. These areas would be unnamed parts of the map, which have little context, so no one's going to be interested in visiting there. Rotating through these areas should be risk free, but don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Beware of the bush campers. Positioning in the early game is going to be important. Always, always, man, look for the center circle in the first three zones to increase your chances of getting a circle every time. Natural high ground will work best for boxing up, and if you can find an area with spare materials around like brick, build a brick one by one and just camp out the zone. Rotate early if you're not in a safe zone and just constantly piece together where plays may be so you can just avoid any and all risk. As we said before, the players that you're going to be coming up against are going to be mixed because of the point reset, right? Some bad, some really, really good. So we just want you to know that so you can just be confident and just keep a goal in mind. As much as we say to avoid fighting, the only reason for this really is just because of placement points. You know, they're just really, really more achievable goal for maximum points than just W King is. <laughs> if you're getting into an engagement, do not seem weak. If you get tagged, shoot some shots back and just appear confident to get inside the mind of your opponent. So that's mid game being covered. Let's move on to the final topic, which of course is the end game. Here we go. Late game is exactly how it sounds, right? The final moments of your game. Everything that you have done up until this point now has a direct effect on your chances of winning the game. This one, guys, is, you know, the main reasons why we mentioned floppers earlier really is because you have successfully avoided fights throughout the game, right? And avoid using the items then, which are now going to be your best friend in the end game. So first thing that we want to talk about in the late game topic is positioning and zones. Like we said with mid game, if you have found yourself a good natural high ground position, then that's great. The difference, though, in this topic is that in the fourth zone known as the 50 50 zone, you want to be looking to box up the edge zone. This is because <laughs> the 50 50 circle will be half in the safe circle and half in the storm. Taking a gamble on the edge of the circle is better than just looking to position yourself in the center as you're likely not going to get into the circle. So if you're in the end game, it is really likely that you're down to the last remaining players, right? By now, you should be within the last 25th players left in the match. First of all, well done, bravo, bravo for, for just even getting this far, but it's not over yet, all right? At this point in the game, everyone who is still alive likely has the best loot the game can offer, so you cannot give up your concentration just yet. With the circle being so small, it would be so hard for you just to avoid a fight. So don't. If players see you actively not opening your box to take shots, then they're going to think that you don't have the confidence and this is going to be a sign that you're a bad player. So you cannot be afraid to peek through your unedited cone and gain information. Once you understand where your threats are, take safe peeks. Keeping the line of sight closed so that other players cannot go for you, okay? The goal is to look for shots on players rotating or players who are already fighting with one another, you know, minimizing your risk of being damaged and maximizing your damage dealt to other players. In the early points of your arena journey, you're likely not to get the most stack lobbies. <laughs> if you haven't already learned different tunneling techniques that are just a great way to rotate safely to circle without risking any fighting, you know, we definitely got a video coming out shortly on how to master in game, where we talk about how to rotate, how to change layers, and just about everything that you need to know. So you gotta make sure that you're subscribed with the notifications turned on. All right, guys, we gotta do a recap real quick. Who's ready? When choosing the drop spot, consider these following things, all right? Chances of being contested, loot potential, and positioning on the map. These key details are going to allow you to get the best drop spot and have the best chances of getting those placement points. Okay, avoid fighting in the mid game by remembering the battle bus route and just looking for uncontested areas. If you do end up in an engagement, then just don't panic, all right? Just play confident, you can do it. 
Okay, so in the late game, gain information on players around you. You know, open up safe peaks from your box and just look for players who are rotating or just try third partying a fight. In the late game, if you can pick up kills, not only will it get you points for kills, but you will also be able to improve your placement in the match as well. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like it, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more vids coming out your way.